Yorkshire Dales. It's high speed impact, it's head on, and somebody's not moving in a car. What happens when bikers take on gravity and lose? Breathe in, deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. And Helimed 99 flies to the rescue of a teenager injured in the snow. Sledging down the hill like an idiot. Yorkshire's flying paramedics get a bird's eye view of some of England's most stunning countryside. The dales and moors are where the speed of the helicopter comes into its own. When the winter sun shines, Apple Tree Wick in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales is a favourite lunch stop for keen ramblers. But nearly 1,500 feet up on a peak overlooking the village, one walker is going to be going hungry today. Georgina Marsland has broken her ankle after a nasty fall on a hilltop footpath and her friends have just dialed 999. Uh, we're just coming over Ladsdale and uh, Georgina, I don't know, the last or next to the last rung just fell off. Presumably her foot was caught in the style and there was this awful crack. We were heading for lunch at the Craven Arms, which I've just rung and cancelled, <laughs> unfortunately. Georgina and her friends are waiting for help from above. Helimed 99's on the way. Uh, we're flying to Apple Tree Wick. Um, it's a lovely, beautiful area, popular with walkers. It's quite isolated where we're going, so we'll hopefully be able to uh, airlift her, maybe to the ambulance or maybe into the hospital. Yorkshire's a big place from the air. There's 6,000 square miles of it. And paramedic Sammy Wills' job is to find an injured walker in a red coat. It's not easy. These are the group of trees going up Trolls Gill. <laughs> so it should be this side. Oh, it should be down there. It should be yeah, down there. On this ridge, yeah. The team have only been told Georgina's near an isolated farm in a remote area of rugged Wharfdale. And this farm that's below us now, Steve. Has someone just come out and is looking up at us? The farm we just passed over. Yeah, the farm we just overflow. The local land ambulance is having trouble finding Georgina too. Well, that ambulance has shot back up into the sea, pound empty. Yeah. And about 99, yeah, we're, uh, we're over the, this detail at Apple Tree Wick. Uh, we're able to locate the uh, patient. Do you know if the uh, land crew have any area where the patient is, or if they've got the patient on board? If it's on board, ring the call about cover. Should and about 99, Roger. Dr Jez Pinnell is used to this problem. 999 callers often don't provide the most accurate information. Yeah, people often panic, particularly if someone's quite poorly. Um, so yeah, they maybe just give scant information to the, to the telephone operator. So yeah, we often find that what we, what we get is different to what we, uh, what we, what we expected to get. Your control, Helmet 99 receiving. Helmet 99 receiving your control. Uh, I'll give the call me a ring back and see if we can get any better location for you. I did tell us they were just south of Dale Head Farm. Okay, I'm getting a wave at this farm, the guy in the field. There's a gentleman furiously waving to try and get your attention, just south of Dale Head Farm. He's on the track, yeah. Is he waving? He was it? waving, yeah. Okay, we'll go down and see him, shall we? We'll, we'll have, have a chat. Next turn, yeah? Yep. Okay. Element 99, yeah, we've got visual with the gentleman that's on the front here now. Thank you. He's running down the path, Stephen. Do you want to stay here, Sam, and I'll go talk to him, see where the patient is. Helimed 99 doesn't often land to ask for directions, but today they'll make an exception. Georgina's friend Jeff Kirk has hiked yeah. down from okay, the hilltop where she fell to guide in her rescuers. Yeah, OK, so it's on the top there, she's on the top There's there. three people there, the patient and two others. Right, OK. They ought to be waving to you. She's cold and in shock. For Georgina, the wait for help has already been an ordeal. It's six degrees Celsius in the valleys, but on top of the fells, a biting wind makes it feel much colder. Her husband Keith's trying to keep her chin up, but he's worried. We've been sat here a while, I'm absolutely frozen. At least pilot Steve now knows where his patient is, but there's a problem. Just be aware of rocks that are actually hidden under the heather. Yeah. It's not a nice landing place here. 
Georgina was walking down from a boulder-strewn peak called Simon's Seat. This is not a good place to land a three-ton helicopter. And it's quite foggy. Yeah, I'm not going to find somewhere suitable. What are you thinking? Just go have a look on this flat bit in front of us there, see what's yeah. there. See if it's flat first. You've got a big rock on the uh, yeah, rear right, Steve. Can't tell how slow Peter's getting this. Yeah. Pain, isn't it? Steve's having real trouble. Every potential landing site is littered with large rocks. Steve needs clear ground to touch down. And if he can't find somewhere safe, Georgina's rescuers will have to hike up 1,500 feet up from the valley below. Help could be a long time coming. Coming up on Helicopter Heroes, Georgina's in terrible pain, but there's another setback for her rescuers. That's sinking, that's sinking. Helimed 99 descends into a blizzard as the crew scramble to an emergency in the hills. There's a race against weather of a different kind as a rainstorm threatens to ground the chopper and its patient. Might have to come straight back to the airport and then arrange for an ambulance to meet us at the airport. The paramedics reckon that in two years on an air ambulance they will treat as many serious injuries as some colleagues on the ground will see in a whole career. But some injuries are especially tragic and avoidable. The Yorkshire Dales are a playground for millions every summer, but the crags and fells look down on communities that often aren't as idyllic as they seem. I work in the rural area of uh, the Dales up in North Yorkshire and um, it does have its social problems. And the crew of Helimed 99 are about to come face to face with the effects of one of the fastest growing problems in the Dales. They say in one person not moving on it as well on the job that's coming on this screen. What grid we got Chris? Yeah, the Delta 7. At Air Ambulance HQ, the crew know minutes cost lives. A BMW has collided head-on with a van at high speed. On a road lined with dry stone walls, there was no escape for the van driver. Paramedic Pete Valance's job is to navigate the chopper to the scene. And today, Helimed 99 has to beat the weather, with low clouds obscuring the tops of the fells. The shunt has blocked the A65, the main road from the Lake District to the Dales. Driving to the scene would be slow going, but Helimed 99 is doing 150, and they need to get there fast. One definite fatal, one pos fatal. And the road is cleared for you to land. Over. Helimed 99, Roger, thanks for receiving our each airport from McLean, five to six minutes away. The local emergency services have turned out in force. Thanks to them, two patients are already on their way to hospital by road. The chopper has Dr. Anil Hormis on board. He's a hospital anaesthetist who volunteers to take his skills to the scene of accidents. Today, his knowledge will be stretched to the limit. The BMW's driver is unconscious in the back of the road ambulance. Shake him in. Put your head on. How was? Wrong way. Yeah, yeah. This accident doesn't add up. It happened on the brow of a hill, and the BMW had ignored solid white lines. The paramedics have their suspicions about the cause. When they fail to find a usable vein in their patient's arms, they're confirmed. Accidents involving drivers influenced by drugs are a daily occurrence. We're, we're flying the gentleman through to, uh, to Lancaster, which is, is the nearest major hospital that we can attend. The driver is fighting for his life. His only chance is a rapid flight to intensive care in nearby Lancaster. Uh, at the moment, he's unconscious, multiple injuries. He has been intubated at scene. We're having difficulty getting IV access. And we will be setting off hopefully within the next five minutes. Whoever just watch that arm, we might fall out. It's only. It's 15 miles away, yeah. Take us about seven or eight minutes to get there but today we're flying into a headwind, so that might be slightly uh, 
spread out. It might be up to 10 minutes to get there. Dr O'Neill is used to monitoring patients in the quiet of Doncaster Royal Infirmary. Today he has to do his job in the noise and vibration of a helicopter, at the same time as coping with the air turbulence caused by the Pennines, a thousand feet below. Uh, at the moment he's still got a heartbeat. Uh, we are breathing for him, he has been um, intubated, so we are breathing for the, uh, for the patient. That, that's really about it at the moment. He's got quite serious bone injuries as well, uh, fractured leg. Uh, possibly fractured pelvis, you've got chest injuries, head injuries, so not looking very good unfortunately. The driver's vital signs are dropping. Intensive care at Lancaster's state-of-the-art hospital is now only minutes away. But Helimed 99's involved in a life or death race, it could still lose. Coming up. Doctors begin their fight to save the driver, but his family think they know why the accident happened. His driving was erratic, it's too fast. A walker needs help, but will she get it? That's sinking, that's sinking. <laughs> Sliding. And paramedic pulls on standby as daredevil bikers show off their skills. Bad weather is the one thing the flying paramedics can't fight. Some days they can't even get off the ground. But it's winter that really tests the skills of the pilots and crew. It's below zero at Leeds Bradford Airport and it's business as usual for the airlines jetting off to the winter sun. But for the crew of Helimed 99, snow means their job just got much harder. Uh, the main drama is landing in snow because um uh, when it's all loose and powdery, you get uh, quite a lot of recirculating snow. So your plan is to go out and practice some once it stops snowing and people stop chucking snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> Being on high ground like this, we can get um, snow showers and we just want to go off and do a little bit of training. Um, just to be able to do some snow landings, we've got to keep up to date with that it's uh, quite a dangerous operation if we get a call. Pilot Tim Taylor wants to practice the most difficult part of winter flying, landing. And so he's heading up into the rugged Peak District. What they're about to try is difficult and potentially dangerous. The snow cloud engulfs the aircraft so you lose all visual references outside. Yeah, you'll get a weight out. So you, you try and let the pilot know exactly where the snowstorm is before, you get to, before it gets to him. The tail, the door, with you. Tim's flying blind in a mini blizzard. Just before touchdown, he decides to have another go. One wrong move and they could crash. But this time, there's no mistake. Helimed 99 is down. Tim's done it. We don't get that much snow in the UK, so like today when we have got some, we've, we've come out and practiced just so when we do use them in anger, um, we're fully prepared. Uh, and know what, it, what it's gonna, uh, the experience is going to be like. But now Tim and the team will have to do it all again. For real. High on a hillside in the Pennines, a land ambulance crew have hiked for miles to reach 17-year-old Joe Haig, whose afternoon out with his mates has ended in agony. Sledging down the hill like an idiot. He's complaining of lower back pain. We basically call the helicopter out because of the remoteness and the fact that where we were, we'd be stranded. Even though the snow's now thawing in the valleys of West Yorkshire, there's still plenty left 2,000 feet up in the hills. Uh, now will be a first for um, a sledging job. People go sledging on the hills, um, which are quite inaccessible sometimes. Um, so the helicopter can help out the crews by uh, being able to get close to the patient. Landing up here won't be easy finding their patient in a bleak white landscape has its problems too. Something in the middle of the forest here, quite a lot of people in the middle of the forest. I can't see anybody injured there, can you? No, I can't, they're all on the feet. There's somebody definitely waving in the middle there, which has been waving forever since we've been going over. These three people here, right in the middle of the trees, look, there's somebody there with a blanket and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. See? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're in. Finally, Lee spots Joe and the ground crew 
hidden in the trees that brought his sledge to a sudden halt. It's going to be easier to come down with somebody rather than going up. Yeah. yeah. OK. Come on, people. Move, move, move. OK, dogs coming. Tim's training mission has paid off, but he couldn't see a dip in the ground concealed by snow. It's falling down a bloody crater. But they're down, and now the paramedics can get to work. Well, we'll be a fat all there. Looks like it's a bit of a steep incline, but I don't know uh, what he's been doing sledging in here in the woods when there's all that clear area to go through out there. Hell, where is it? Well, best way down for this guy is going to be on a sledge. Hello. Joe's in pain and very cold. Yeah, you grab that for me, sir. We need to we need to organise to be able to get him off just off this incline a bit, which the best thing for us to do is just slide him down. Joe's going to hospital the same way he hurt himself, only this time someone's watching out for the trees. Okay, I'll hold him there. All right, let's just wait there a sec. Joe's mates think he's just bruised himself, but the paramedics know an accident like this can cause serious injuries. It's levelling off now. It's levelling off now. That's worst. It's easy. That's it. He's not strapped to a spinal board for nothing. People have been paralysed by accidents like this. Oh, I was sledging down a hill and I crashed into a tree. A bum first. I tested this hill out first and went down. Yeah. Then he followed me straight after and uh, went straight into a tree and smashed his back. I'm in quite a lot of pain. Ready, steady, lift. There we They're more than a mile from the nearest road and darkness is falling. If it wasn't for the helicopter, rescuing Joe from the hill would be a difficult operation. Keep going, keep going, keep sliding and stop. We parked somewhere over there first and realised it was too far away so got a bit closer but it's still a bit of a trek. I think it's probably the only place in Yorkshire with any snow left so it was worthwhile going out this morning and practising. The crew are running out of light, but the nearest hospital is little more than a minute away. Joe will soon be checked out by doctors in a specialist accident and emergency unit. Huddersfield, OK. OK. And what a difference a few hundred feet makes. Down in the valley, the snow's turned to slush on the football pitch that doubles up as the local helipad. Got goalposts on the left. It's something I've always wanted to do. Not under these conditions, obviously. Joe's just fulfilled a lifetime ambition. Just watch that slope at the end. And the clear. And the good news. Joe had just strained his back, and he'll be back on the slopes of the Pennines the next time the snow falls. Coming up, the story behind a rural car crash shocks the Dales. He was introduced to drugs probably when he was about 15. He took the life of his best friend. And there's a life or death race to get an injured biker to hospital. Blood pressure dropping. How far to go now? But now, we're back in the hills of Wharfdale, where the local landscape's getting in the team's way as they try and rescue a walker injured on a remote fell side. 1,500 feet up in the Yorkshire Dales, Walker Georgina Marsland is in pain after falling on a moorland stile and breaking her ankle. She's stuck on a chilly hillside so remote that Helimed 99's crew had to land and ask the way. OK, so it's on the top there, she's on the top There's there. three people there, the patient and two others. Right, OK. They ought to be waving to you. But their problems didn't end there. Pilot Steve Cobb's desperately searching for a landing site to put his chopper down, but boulders and bogs litter the hilltop. And it's quite boggy. Yeah, I'll see if it can find somewhere suitable. What are you thinking? Just gotta have a look at this flat bit in front of us there, see, what, uh, yeah. see if it is flat first. After three minutes hovering over the summit of a peak called Simon's Seat, yeah, okay, yeah. Pilot Steve chooses a spot. That's sinking, that's sinking. <laughs> sliding, sliding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 
but he quickly has to change his mind as Helimed 99's landing skids sink into a bog. This time, Steve's taking no chances. Before he risks lowering three tons of helicopter onto the hillside, paramedic Pat Greekin's going to test the landing site for firmness. Just jump out the side, Pat, see if you sink into the uh, stuff. It's a real mixture, isn't it? It's solid rock and bog. Down to the out there. It's solid, and at last the team can get to work. Right, Georgina. <coughs> <coughs> this hand on. Just want to try and keep you well covered on her. Uh, it's probably broken her ankle. It's uh, not difficult. We can't get her boot off the road to have a look, but she's in a lot of pain. And she can't put any weight on it. Uh, as you can see, we're uh, quite away from civilization. Helicopter's just up there, 100 yards behind us. Um, she can't walk up, but we might be able to carry her up on, on a spinal board, which is our plan A. Plan B is. Uh, Mountain yeah, rescue, but obviously it's going to take them probably an hour to get up here, which isn't a problem, but it's just a bit cold and she's, she's been here half an hour already. So. <laughs> See how plan A goes. Pat's given Georgina morphine to dull the pain. Elsewhere, this would be a minor injury, but on top of the Dales, even the most trivial incident can turn into something life threatening. The team's patient is getting colder. She must be moved. Uh, we're going to try and get the lady up to the air ambulance. We're going to we've given the lady uh, morphine, then we'll put the lady onto the spinal board, and then slowly walk her up. Georgina's ankle will need setting in hospital. A splint is the best they can do here. One, two, three. And at least they can lift her off the wet ground. One more. One more. Do again. There we are. Shall we have a wander up and just see how... That's just because I really think it's... Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sammy and Dr Jez are trying to find a route back to Helimed 99, up a steep, slippery hillside. Yeah, make yourself comfortable. At the top of the hill, at least someone's warm. He's just, uh, Steve's just making himself comfortable in the aircraft with a uh, blanket. <laughs> Keeping out the wind, keeping himself warm. Gonna like this, Georgina. But Jez and Sammy come back with bad news. It's just really slippy underfoot. There's a lot of rocks and uh, it's not too steep. And it's not too far, but our, our stretcher isn't really designed for carrying people up the sides of mountains. It's an extrication device. The state of play is we're going to wait for mountain rescue or fell rescue to help carry you up because it's just a bit too, too steep and slippery. Okay. Georgina needs the specialist equipment that only the local fell rescue team will have, and they could be an hour or more. I've just asked Jeff, who was a gent that met us at the bottom of the hill, if he won't mind going back down again to meet fell rescue, to ex tell them exactly where we are, because well, we don't want uh, fell rescue delayed getting up here. So I'm quite conscious of how cold it is up here and how windy it is. Well, certainly if it gets a bit cold in this, and in the, in the wind, she's, she's out of the wind behind the wall, but yeah, people can get... Um, yeah. I'm a bit hypothermic, but she, she isn't at the moment. It's something we have to bear in mind. Luckily, Sammy has some special equipment of her own in the rucksack. The Bothy is a sort of two-person tent. It's cosy and could be a lifesaver. It's a big factor, and, and I've learnt a lot from Mountain Rescue that, that cold does make a patient more uncomfortable. Um, so we've, we've padded, we've put things underneath her, and then just getting rid of the wind takes a, a, makes a big difference. That's as soon as you said, isn't it? Yes. It's made, it's made yeah, a huge definitely. difference getting inside. I was saying I feel really bad. You know, I'm sure there must be somebody else who needs it more. Um, and it just seems so silly. But, but usually, we're, I mean, we are prepared when we go walking. We'll make sure we've got the correct clothing and, and footwear. But um, even though they're strong ankle boots, it's... it's Accidents bad, happen. It's, yeah. It looks like Georgina could at last be in sight of the hospital treatment she needs. But when Dr Jez speaks to Fell Rescue, there's another problem. I had a bit of a difficulty getting people out, um, because obviously they're volunteers and uh, I think people are away on holiday as well. The other difficulty they've had is um, getting hold of a, a, a stretcher. And they're telling me the nearest one might be Grassington or somewhere now. I'm not from around it, but I think that's quite, I think that's quite a way away. Keep your feet warm. The experts and equipment Georgina needs are still out of reach, and it's getting colder.
coming up on Helicopter Heroes. Help arrives for the injured walker, but there's another problem. We'll have to take her up on the spinal cord, but with as many people as possible. And a biker takes on a rock face and comes off worst. He's fallen away from his bike and uh, hit his leg on a bit of a rock. Behind every accident, I can tell you there's a story. And even in the picturesque Ribsdale, the same social problems that bring misery to our large cities are a factor in many tragedies. The busy road linking the Yorkshire Dales and the lakes has been blocked. A BMW has crossed the double white lines and collided head on with a van. The car is on the wrong side of the road. The passenger has died. The driver has massive injuries, but he's alive. Helimed 99 has Dr. Anil on board today. He's an anaesthetist and takes over the patient's breathing as they rush him to Lancaster Hospital. From the Dales to the trauma team takes just 12 minutes. The patient's family are all informed about the crash and are rushed to the hospital to be with him. Before they get there, 37-year-old Andrew Edmondson from the market town of Settle in North Yorkshire has a heart attack. He couldn't have had more help. Had he any chance of survival, the air ambulance gave him it. But unfortunately, his injuries were too significant to live. It wasn't enough, but they tried. At the scene of the crash, Dr O'Neill and the crew couldn't find a vein in Andrew to get the anaesthetics they needed into his body. They suspected he was a drug user who'd been injecting himself. Most patients, we are able to get access to their veins quite easily, but uh, this was a very unusual cir circumstance and sadly it was the drugs that played the biggest part in that. In the end, um, Peter and Paul really struggled to get any access anywhere else. The only place that I could go was uh, at the top of his neck and put a, um, a cannula, an intravenous cannula, into the top of the neck so I could give my drugs. The air ambulance paramedics increasingly come across incidents like this involving illegal drugs. But this is the heart of the Yorkshire Dales. On the outside you've got uh, the beauty, the quietness, the charm of the Yorkshire Dales. But deep down, there's always occasions where, unfortunately, drugs are going to play a part. And on, you know, on this occasion, you know, drugs have raised the whole ugly head, and as a result, two people have died because of them. Andrew Edmondson's family got in touch with Helicopter Heroes and asked us to tell the story behind his accident. His sister, Sharon Holt, wanted to say thank you to the people who tried to save her brother, and sorry to those whose lives have been devastated by the crash. She also wanted people to know that drugs can kill, even in the heart of a national park. He took the life of his best friend and traumatised countless other people. His driving was erratic. It's too fast. He overtook on double white lines on the brow of a hill. And that's not the actions of somebody that's thinking. He was introduced to drugs probably when he was about 15 and was still addicted to heroin when he died. They were going to take his life in one way or another, whether it was this way or something else. Helimed 99's paramedics know from experience that no matter how quaint the setting, drugs are around and they can impact on the daily life of a rural community in the same way as an inner city. The fact is, in rural North Yorkshire, the use of Class A drugs goes up year by year and those who work on the front line have to deal with the consequences. Crack cocaine um, taken in intravenously and then trying to drive is, is an absolute disaster area. The effects on, on your whole system, especially your ability to make decisions, your speed of movement, your, your judgment calls are totally impaired. You associate drug, drug abuse of that nature within the cities 
and, and I, I think this just shows that drug abuse is so widespread that you can be anywhere in the country and have to deal with, um, with drug abuse and drug problems and it's just raising the awareness to, to people that, that it happens. Everybody tried hard for Andrew. Everybody tried hard. Unfortunately, he's left behind a mess. And you, do, you don't like the way he lives, and you don't like what he does. But when they tell you that your brother's died, it's, all of that doesn't matter anymore, really. You're still your brother. Coming up on Helicopter Heroes, rescue is on its way to an injured hiker. So where's your helicopter? It's there, back at the top of that rock. Oh. Yeah. 250cc and enough horsepower to climb a rock face. But there's one fact about off-road biking they don't tell you in the manual. When you come off, it hurts. And there's an awful lot of people that can tell you just how much. Motocross and trials bike riding is one of the fastest growing sports in the UK. Thousands of people take part in organised events like this one. But even if you're an expert like these guys, doing this is never going to be risk free. Air Ambulance paramedic Paul Bradbury is on hand, just in case. Yeah, I think I'm going to pop down and put a deposit down on one tomorrow. One of the reasons he's here is that he and all the Helimed crews have had plenty of experience of picking up the pieces when biking for fun goes wrong. At a motocross event in a wood near Ripon, a young biker has come off. It's just his knee. He's just come through here and just uh, uh, got in the rut and just overbalanced, basically. Paul and Helimed 9-8 are on the way. The problem with most trial bike injuries is the location where we have to find the rider. Uh, you know, the nature of trial riding, they don't ride on uh, concrete roads, it's normally in the middle of a wood or up a hillside, so uh, that's where the air ambulance comes into it. So, 14 year old biker Stephen Brown is in great pain. Stephen, can you put your good leg onto the top of your bad one? He's miles from anywhere and the weather is closing in. The cloud base is quite low down and it's quite, uh, quite breezy. The young rider has been taking part in an organised, well marshalled competition. His knee is the problem. After the fall, it isn't where it should be. The paramedics give him Entonox, gas and air, for the pain. Good lad, good lad. Deep breath. Deep breath. As some of the other riders prepare the way to give Stephen a clear path out to the helicopter, pilot Tim gets anxious. I should imagine within the next four or five minutes it's going to be a dense bank of cloud and a bit of sleep moving into the area which will cause problems uh, for us flying out. So we need to get the patient loaded as quick as we can. As Stephen is taken to the helicopter, a bank of cloud sweeps in. They need to take off now. Pilot Tim rings ahead to the control desk to tell them his plan. Once we've taken off, we'll make an assessment whether we can get to Harrogate or we might have to come straight back to the airport and then arrange for an ambulance to meet us at the airport. See you later, mate. You'll be all right. Don't you worry very much. Okay. Once they are in the air, the decision is made. We're going to take you to Lee's Bradford Airport. Okay. All right, what we'll do, we'll get an ambulance to take you from there down to the hospital. Yeah. All right, don't worry about anything. I know it's a bit bumpy, but don't worry. With its state-of-the-art air traffic control, Landing at the airport is the only safe option. I tend to walk in now, we pop around your leg, get some sympathy. Will I get crutches? I would think so, yeah, yeah, if you ask nicely. And as they land, the ambulance pulls in to take a grateful and now pain free young biker on his way to hospital. Stephen's injuries were minimised by the fact that he was wearing protective equipment. And if you do this sort of thing for fun, you're going to need it. I have a, a, a motorbike of my own, uh, which I wouldn't part with for anybody's money. My bike comes out of the garage and it's boots, leathers, protective jacket, helmet, good quality gloves and a back protector. But not everyone is like Daz. 
Up and down the country, legions of young bikers on common ground are a frequent sight. Riding illegally, no supervision, without the right kit. Ambulance service, OK? And incidents like this in South Yorkshire are becoming all too common. Yeah, this guy's um, got a nasty head injury. Um, we need to just get uh, some things under control, first of all, his airway, um, and then we'll uh, take it from there. Yeah, very serious. You're doing well, that's grand, absolutely grand. And we're going to fly him to Northern Gemra in Sheffield. It's only about uh, three or four minutes away, so it shouldn't take us too long. They only go out to have a good time, and I would be the last person in the world to stop them, you know, wanting to enjoy themselves on a motorbike. I've done it myself. But the piece of kit that they don't wear is invariably where they'll get injured. If they don't wear the boots, they'll get a broken leg. If they don't wear a helmet, they'll wind up with a fractured skull or worse. Oh, pressure dropping. How far to go now? Fuel pulls are they reacting? Was he on the back of the other lad that was yeah, there? Was yeah, he? the back of his bike. Yeah, that's why there was only one bike. He fell off without a helmet. Within a few minutes of leaving the scene of the bike smash, the crew touched down at the accident and emergency unit at Sheffield's Northern General Hospital. They have done everything they can. I've fallen off a bike many, many times. So far, I've managed to get up and walk away. But I would definitely say that's down to some decent gear. Daz and the crew of Helimed 99 are on their way to a wooded area near a railway line somewhere near Rotherham. Sometimes when they set off, the location details are all a bit sketchy. It's the second, well, anyway, here you are. The air ambulance's unit manager, Mick Linley, is back on the shop floor today as a paramedic. Hey, for what well, get out track, you can't miss it. Well, what have you said that yesterday? What's the uh, job we're going to, anyway? Motorcyclist. On the track, off a cliff. Oi. 45 year old Glenn Lease has been trials riding for years. But no matter how good you are, if you fall down a cliff, it's going to hurt. It was just going up those rocks there, and then all his weight went on that leg, and basically that was it. The motocross event that Glenn's been riding in is a downhill and uphill test of skill, and he's right at the bottom of the downhill bit with a badly broken leg. Well, can I just get there with you and just have a little, a little squint at him? Pull away from his bike and uh, hit his leg on a bit of a rock. Glenn's wearing all the right protective gear, and before Daz can give him morphine for the pain, they need to get some of it off. Hey, I have two choices with this. Do you want me to cut it, or do you want to lift it over your no, head? I'll take it off, it's no problem. Let me help you then. And that's going to hurt too. Pull your head in. Ah! Got it. Great. Listen, this might make you feel funny. <laughs> After Daz has delivered the morphine shot, the carrying crew can begin the climb up. And it's tricky when you're lugging a big biker with a broken leg. Well, we're going here, we're not going up there, surely. The biking community sticks together when one of their number are hurt. It's been an uphill struggle, and Glenn's stretcher bearers are relieved to see the top of the hill. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and down. Yeah, lovely. And another of Helimed 99's biker patients is on his way to get fixed. Flying in the air at 150 miles an hour, distance doesn't mean quite as much as it does down there. But up in the hills, one of Helimed 99's patients is still a long way from hospital. Walker Georgina Marsland is sheltering halfway up a fell in the Yorkshire Dales with a broken ankle. Helimed 99 had trouble landing on the rocky peak. You got a big rock on the yeah, rear right, right, Steve. And reaching the chopper with their patient will mean a difficult climb up a slippery slope for the paramedics. But at last help is on its way. Volunteers from the local fell rescue team have hiked 1,500 feet to help Georgina. The trouble is they haven't brought the specialist rescue stretcher needed to safely carry her to the helicopter. We've kind of come to the decision that we'll have to take her up on the spinal board but with as many people as possible. I think with eight people, I think that's that's safe enough. That's plenty of hands, and we should we should manage fine. She's she's she looks she looks nice and slim, right, so she'll sure be fine. So what you should have gone through? Just back that rock, top that rock. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, can we all lift back down again? Then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, snug as a bug. 
there wasn't enough people to safely do it, but I think now we've got you three and yeah. I think there's enough people to safely do it. What the team were about to try is a calculated risk, but they have little alternative but to take it. It's well over an hour since Georgina's fall. She is cold and in pain. But the only stretcher they have is difficult to carry uphill. The climb is steep and there's only a dry stone wall to stop anyone who falls. But they've done it and Georgina's finally reached Helimed 99. And that's it, thanks for the... Um, Welcome to Yorkshire Air Ambulance. <laughs> finally. Hey. How's that feel? Yeah? yeah? Cool. Georgina's going home from her day out in the Dales rather more quickly than she expected. At Harrogate we can land on the stray behind the hospital and they'll come out of a trolley to meet us so we don't need a secondary transfer there. And this, this lady's from Harrogate as well, so it's, it's ideal really. I'm not a walker myself. I'd rather uh, stay home and, uh, in front of a nice warm fire and watch television. Oh, Pat! That's man. I, I, I openly admit I'm a couch potato when I'm, <laughs> when I'm not aware. Element 9 and Alpha is about to let down at Harrogate. We've got to wind in the field, please. Pat's patient will be in hospital within 10 minutes of leaving the hillside and she's very grateful despite the time she spent waiting for her rescue. It's been excellent, it, it couldn't have been any better. And people are so kind and considerate and, and, uh, and careful. I, I really do appreciate it. And after the flight, just the final careful lift into the hospital. Two weeks on and Georgina's back home in Harrogate. She's a keen walker and runner and this isn't going to stop her. It's a clean break so hopefully it will heal quickly and um, hopefully I'll have the pot off in four weeks and then be able to go walking again. And Georgina's so impressed with Sammy's miniature tent she's planning to get one herself. It just looked like almost like um, a play tent for children very sort of small and as soon as she put it up you know you could really tell the difference and it, it kept the heat in uh, and it kept the wind off so it's a really we'd said that we'd get one you know, when we were going out walking it's really good and Georgina plans to return to Simon's seat only this time she'll be a bit more careful on the style they seem to run up the hill <laughs> they were really really uh, they were really quick off the mark they must have been very fit um, and straight into the helicopter. And that was done really professionally. I was very impressed. 